let's pivot, right? And then <laughs> let's pivot because we're talking about accommodations. Uh, did you see that, uh, Dwayne? Did you see that DJ Envy mm-hmm. uh, post? Yeah, I was surprised by it. Yeah, when he when he talked about how, how many years was it? Ten years. Ten years. Ten years where his wife. What's the wife's name? Do you remember? Gia. Gia. His mm-hmm. wife. Gia faked the big O. Mm-hmm. Right. That's a long time to be faking. That's so, faked it's so sad. the big. It just makes me so faked sad. Faked the yes. big O. Right. And because they're promoting their book. I think they've been married. What? 17 or 27 mm-hmm. years. I can't remember. It's, a long time. it's one of those yeah. those numbers. So I was glad that he was transparent. Uh, but when we start thinking about it, you said it's a long time. But, you know, what what were you taught? And we'll start, with, you know, Dwayne, what were you taught about how to please a woman, either from a father figure, uh, the boy, the homies, uh, movies, boys in the hood, <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, uh, genuine. I mean, what what were you taught about actually how to please your wife before you got married or even during marriage? For me, the, the evolution, I would say it wasn't drastic because it wasn't really much that as a man that I was taught about a woman and her body. And I find that through Netflix shows and things that I see today that there's a lot that women aren't taught about their own body. So, you know, for me, I did not understand what I needed to dive into to learn. Um, fortunately, Literally. it was nothing that I could <laughs> learn. always so you know. extra, man. It's just no one focus, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I've always expressed to my wife, if you have anything you want me to know, please don't assume that I know it. Mm-hmm. Like, do you say that like, and, and I know how I can see Michelle right now, right? <laughs> but I'm ignoring her. I'm not looking at her, right? I'm not looking at her, right? Um, do you ask her like after love making, do you have a meeting? I mean, couples really want to know, like, how do you have this conversation with your wife? Uh, I think before the counseling, we did have to learn that, you know, I felt like I was being blamed for what I didn't know Mm -hmm. and what I, and that was something that I was, I had a trouble accepting because if I don't know it and you didn't tell me or express me, I'm not going to accept the blame. So please understand if you want me to know something, please tell me. And then I'll do, if I don't do what you ask me to do, then we can have mm-hmm. a different conversation. Mm-hmm. I'm asking Michelle to get me, right? No, <laughs> right? no, no. no, no, I'm no. So like we, we had a similar conversation, right? You know, because Mecca is very laid back. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember doing lovemaking. I was like, you gonna talk? I mean, like what? Like, <laughs> like, like, like I'm like, give us some feedback. I'm, am I am I am I heading in the right direction? Am I off? Mm-hmm. Are, are, are you no, no. appeasing me it's or am similar, I getting I'd like to have the similar conversation <laughs> beforehand because I feel like it during is just like it breaks things up. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if there's something that I like or actually something that I don't like, I'm not gonna say it in the middle of it, like, oh, I don't like that. I would prefer yeah, to don't, wait don't, until don't afterwards. Do that, don't do that. You know? <laughs> or, and not even afterwards, actually before or the following day or something. Yeah, and I, I and if I can jump in, if you don't mind. If I can jump in, I feel like there is not enough conversations and there's this feeling of you should know. Um, I think a lot of boys are raised in this culture of, like, you're hypersexual and, you know, you you you... I don't think that there's any emphasis put on your partner and your partner's experience other than if you're doing it right, then she's good. Um, and I think for women, like I was, I was um, brought up in a Christian household and my sex education was just, um, don't have sex before you get married. Right. You know, like basically once you get married, the, the magic doors have opened and you're great. You're right. good. Period. The end. But there's no ex- there's no discussion of, OK, now I'm married. So what does that look like? And how can I go from like, I'm not supposed to be a sexual being before marriage and now I'm married and now I'm supposed to be this. Sexual well, I think goddess. that's one thing that's so unfortunate, though, with especially specifically in our community when it comes to Christian women. Right. Because I can honestly say right now that my mother never really talked to us about sex other than don't have sex until you get married. Like literally that was my introduction into sex. My other introduction I'll never forget was I had a girlfriend who in high school freshman year had sex and she was trying to get me to go egg this guy's car. And I was like, well, if 
sex makes you do that right if it makes you act crazy like this that i don't even understand who my friend is right now Mm -hmm. i don't want to have sex because she's acting real crazy Mm -hmm. so that was my introduction really to sex but the other thing is i think that and even as being a mother of two girls is i don't want to tell either of them and we have a blended family but our youngest daughter telling her like don't touch that that's nasty because i feel like when you put those things in a in a young woman's mind or a young girl's mind she grows up to be a woman who doesn't know her body right yeah i mean so you start talking about i mean look at statistics of the the average woman uh is I don't know how far to go with church watching, you know, but uh, <laughs> the average, average woman gets to the big O in a different way than what men are taught or may be comfortable uh, with, with doing, right, with expressing themselves verbally. I think people can read between the lines right there. And so you have to have that conversation with one of the line I want to give you is like on an eight, nine or 10, where would you rate our love life? Mm. I mean, you have to stack it that way. Mm. And then you want to ask, if they say an eight or a nine, right? Mm. It might be a three, but never say that, right? Mm. Uh, what could you do better? What would you like more? Where would you like for me to focus? What can I do? And so couples that have those conversations actually have better love lives. Mm-hmm. The, the, the fact is married couples have higher marital satisfaction when it comes to sex than single people. You would think it would be single people because right. of variety and all this kind of stuff. But because couples talk, they're actually able to love make in a way that actually meets their, their partner's needs. And so, I don't want to make it seem like Gia, um, specific to the book that they're coming out with and the fact that she said she had, that she faked it for, for 10 years. I don't want to make, make it seem like she's an anomaly, right? Because I've been in women's groups where women who are powerful executives went to a women's conference. And in this particular group, the women talked about how they had never even like really touched themselves down there because mm-hmm. they were told don't touch. So how can you expect for your husband to be able to pleasure you when you don't even know what you like? Right. And so she is not someone who I would say is like the only person that has experienced that. There's probably a lot of women that identify with her. That's right. And how do you have that conversation with DJ Envy? Not being specific, but how do you have that conversation who identifies with the way Mm -hmm. he identifies, right? right? Traditional guy. Uh, That's not an easy conversation. That's not an easy conversation to have. And that's why at A Weekend for Love, right, we have a nightcap signature event mm-hmm. where we help couples to be able to negotiate that conversation. We, we brought in, like, some just a dope, amazing, what's the, I'm, I'm trying not to say the word, intimacy coaches. Yes. <laughs> intimacy coaches, and, and uh, we, we all benefited uh, from that because we want to make sure we keep desire in those conversations. So make sure when y'all are checking out a weekend for love, you know, the, the luxury marriage retreat mm-hmm. that you, you, you partake. In oh yeah. The nightcap is something you don't want to miss out on. Everybody has smiles on Sunday morning. Oh, absolutely. Everybody. Now, everyone's up late Saturday night. <laughs> right. Like, we're being right, real because right. like, and we're unapologetic and talking about it. Cause you have to get away from the kids and you have to be able to reconnect and create uh, that honeymoon experience. Well, the other thing that I say about that is sometimes fellas, guys that are listening in that it takes for you to take your wife outside of being the homemaker, the businesswoman, and all the other roles that she may play, taking care of her mama, whoever it is, for her to tap into being the sex kitten, right? Yes. It takes for her to be removed from all of that. Yeah, so so make sure, make sure y'all... In marriage, everything has to be open. We talked about finances today. Mm-hmm. We talked about making accommodations. We talked about intimacy. Mm-hmm. We, 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 we hit on children. We talked mm-hmm. about changing and pivoting careers. You know how many times you're going to be up and down and, right. and pivot and have opportunities mm-hmm. in, in, your, in your marriage? You know, so when it comes to marriage, it's all about making accommodations, mm-hmm. which means that you have to have a consistent and ongoing conversation. Marriage can't be a noun. It has to be a verb accommodations can't be a noun. It has to be a verb because you have to move on the fly, not only for yourself, but make sure it's working for your spouse and your family. Yes. Pause. Do you want to wrap? This is a long time. I go no, to the Will and Jada. Like, this is really good. So I'm saying like, talk about the Will, Will and Jada okay. and it can be chopped into something. This okay. Is That's why I was doing like this. Should I X this yeah, out? Yeah, no, on? I think to her point, it, this is like a really long episode and i think we just need to chop right. it up and, and, all right. and get so will and jada close and then we're out yes all right mm-hmm. jeffrey i'm ready to go back in all right in five <clears throat> four three two all right so i um in reading uh will smith's book 
Dwayne, I know we talked about, I think Michelle, you recommended it to Dwayne yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I remember in reading, reading his book, he detailed, and I think you would tell me about it, Mac. He detailed oh, yeah. the 40th birthday party with Jada. Yes. And he essentially threw his dream birthday party for her, for her. <laughs> so he had this huge elaborate birthday party, did a huge tribute to her grandmother, who she had a very close relationship with. Who, who, who was with. the artist that was there? Was uh, it, you know, was I don't it Mary know. J? It was some, someone. He, yeah, he I, I want her for my birthday. Right. He flew in one of her favorite artists, had like over a hundred people there. It was all extravagant. Tribute, tribute to her grandmother. I think. Yeah, yeah. I said that tribute to the grandmother, but. It was his birthday, truly, like how he wanted a birthday party, but for her. And she hated it. She hated the birthday party. And so that goes into also knowing your partner's love language and loving your partner the way that they like to be loved. You cannot love a person the way you like to be loved. You have to love them the way that they like to be loved. So so let me let me color it a little bit because I know people might say something about Jada, like how you don't like that, right? But Jada described herself as just more more esoteric, more eccentric rather, mm -hmm. right? Like she'd rather be on a private beach, mm -hmm. uh, living in the land with some mm -hmm. crystals and doing some type of meditation, right? Some low key stuff that's Jada, right? Because she said that we'll watch Dallas. I know we did. Did you watch Dallas with J.R. Ewing? Yes, I grew up watching Dallas. What was the estate? What did they call it? Do you remember? Oh, no, I don't remember. Yeah, whatever the estate <laughs> was, Will Smith said that he wanted that. Mm -hmm. I, I want that, right? Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but he wants that. And so they have this big estate, mm -hmm. you know, out in California. But that's not what Jada wanted. Jada did not want to live on an estate to the degree that they have, mm -hmm. right? She wanted something more subtle that fits her personality. So when the birthday came, she felt like instead of having a birthday party that's catered to me, you had to do the Big Willie. Mm -hmm. You had to do Big Will style to show off to everyone mm -hmm. how you celebrate your wife versus standing down yeah. and finally celebrating me. Mm -hmm. So... Have y'all ever had, ever had a moment oh, like that where y'all have had many, to come? Many, many, many moments. Because <laughs> <laughs> we are opposites. And when they say opposites attract, in our, we have common, like a common outlook in how we want life, but we are very opposite, different love languages. I remember our very first Christmas together. Um, I, you know, again, he grew up not like in a traditional family unit. Christmas was not a big deal. In my family, it was a big deal. Um, and so I wanted a Christmas tree. And he was like, we don't have any kids. Why do we need a Christmas tree? And I'm like, it's our no, first Ain't no Christmas babies up together, in here. And we won't have a Christmas tree. It's not really Christmas. And I came home and he had gotten a Christmas tree. He's like, I'm not decorating it, but you got your tree. <laughs> but, you know, so he oh, gave Grinch. a little bit. Oh, and, Grinch. Exactly, Grinch. So then for our first Christmas presents, he's like, well, what do you want for Christmas? And I'm like, that's not how you do Christmas. It's you know each other because you love me so much, you know the perfect gift. Back to if you don't tell me. <laughs> that is how he I is. I don't know. Oh, it is not a man so, alive. I'm going to let you go, to Michelle, but there's not a man me, alive that just, he, just laments having to surprise, especially you, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, it's, uh, Dwayne. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go he had told me this story about when he was in in school. He played the saxophone, and he loved playing the saxophone. And I think his his stepfather at the time took it and sold it, and and he couldn't play saxophone anymore. So mm -hmm. I found like this old school saxophone. I like hunted it down, found it, wrapped it up. I was just like so excited, so proud. And he opened it. And he was like, I just wanted a PlayStation. <laughs> And I was crushed. I was absolutely crushed. And oh he's like, still in my twenties. He was like, he was like, I told you what I wanted, and you didn't get me what I wanted. Oh, he told you you wanted PlayStation, yes. and you still went. Because and got I thought the sentimental gift, gift was, was yeah. more valuable. We tried to tell him, Dwayne. Just, <laughs> just don't want to listen. And so from then on, we do list. Was he crying? And I, I mean, don't deviate. Oh, I'm list. sorry. You know, but I thought, you know I thought, I thought he messy. was going to get emotional. When he and say, opened like, it up. You listen to me. And like, this is so heartfelt. He was like, I just wanted a PlayStation. <laughs> did you Did you at least play it, bro? You know, no, you he didn't. He did not. <laughs> he just put it back under the tree. I, I didn't have to read. I needed to read to He play did it. not. He's like, I just wanted a PlayStation, but okay. Did you Did you get the PlayStation, man? Did she take the, Did she take it back? Oh, he got the PlayStation. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's 
I can't be mad at him because he told me what he wanted. Right. And that's just who he is. Now, I like the thoughtful, sentimental. Ooh. And so certainly that's what he has to do for me. Mm -hmm. But I can't give him what, what I think he should have. I have to give him what he wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that brings me to a birthday party that I had, for a surprise birthday party that I had for Aldewan. And it started out <laughs> with you know, wake up and took him to the spa. He enjoyed his massage and half a day at the spa. And then I had set up a dinner date. So I said, oh, well, he got back home after taking his bag to the spa. And he said he thought that was it. So we got back to the house. I was perfectly happy. And he man. was good. He, he got in the bed. He turned on the TV. I said, oh, no, no, no. I'm finna watch all these shows everyone else watching on Netflix. You know, I work so much. I'm finna watch these shows no. everyone watches. I was like, no, I no, no. Wait. I have um, some outfits selected for you. Because I got some outfits selected for him, right? I was doing the most. And I said, we have these outfits. I said, but there's a limo coming in like an hour. And he was literally, he had a full blown out mantrum. <laughs> now, the part that I, I have not told you all I'm about not embarrassed is I had about 75 or about 90 people waiting mm -hmm. for this surprise birthday party. And he is having real time a full blown out mantrum, has thrown the <laughs> pillowcase and the covers over his head and is under the covers. And I'm like, He's like, I'll just, I don't want to go to dinner. I was like, oh. I said, I don't want this. <laughs> right. So this is a surprise. I haven't told him that there's people waiting. So I said, oh, no, but dinner. He's like, well, I don't want to go to dinner. Just, we'll just order dinner, dinner in. He's like, tell the limo to go away. So the limo has come now. And now I told the limo driver to go away that I've already paid for, right? And so I was like, okay. Um, well, your parents are going to be there. Some of our other, um, some of your, our parents and some friends. I didn't say friends. I just said parents. And he said, well, tell, call our parents and tell them I don't feel like going. <laughs> I was like, this man is making it so hard for me. I, Meanwhile, I my makeup artist comes. He's like, why are you getting your makeup oh. done for, for my birthday for the dinner? So Ma now Mac he's getting gonna more get irritated. Mad. She was so rude, bro. She just walked in the, she walked in the bedroom. Yeah, like, you ready? Was, yeah. Who, dude? The makeup, the makeup artist. Makeup artist, like, yeah. you ready? Talking to Mac. And I was looking at her last. I said, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why are you in the house? I was like, what's, was, what's going in on? In your bedroom. Wow. No, it was best. So finally, I told him, I was, he was like, what is going on? I said, look. There's several friends and family members that are waiting for us to arrive. So you have to get out the bed and go. And so finally he gets, he puts on his outfit. We get ready to go. We're driving the, our own cars now because the limo is gone that I've paid for. And we pull up like Bobby and Whitney. We, we, I was, are <laughs> we are beefing. I was like, oh, happy birthday to you. Right? This is the birthday party that you want. We I have to go around the corner. It's the photographers, you know, everybody's screaming happy birthday. He goes straight into performance mode. He's like, oh, ha thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. I'm like coming around that corner like. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know how it is when you have to be on. I'm oh, yeah. used to being on, oh, right? Yeah. So you could be I've on. Been there. Yeah, you could be fussing, you know, but like the church or psychology, nobody cares how you feel, right? Mm -hmm. You could be like, man, you, man, you made me. Bless and hallelujah. <laughs> how you doing? The Lord. And you're, yeah. So when I came, I said, what's up, dog? What's going on? My brother came up to me. He said, bro, I tried to tell him, man, this ain't you. <laughs> right. But I actually ended up having fun. Right. I, at yes, the end of the day, yes. I had, it, but I also told her, I said, when you're on all the time and I'm on, I'm in front of someone right. every hour on the day, every hour on the hour. So mm -hmm. that's Monday through Friday with clients. Mm -hmm. And then on Sunday, and then sometimes on Saturday, I have to be who they need me to be. I can't be Aldewan. You see what I'm saying? It's right. not about me. I just want a day where I can chill mm -hmm. and say nothing and just mm -hmm. be opposite of what I do every day. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, so she learned. I'll probably never yeah, have, a him, said, never have a surprise birthday. I told him, I said, he's not going to ever have a surprise birthday party ever, ever again. <laughs> I, I had a ball. She was over there mad. I was. I, I, had to take, I had to have a glass of wine to simmer down because he definitely worked my nerves that day. But it really, truly was because I had the extravagant birthday cake, Michelle. Right, right. You know, it's like, it really was the birthday party you wanted. that I would have wanted. The outfit selected, he had yes. three cake. options. Yes. She got, mean, a, she got a cake. When she brought the cake out, I said, how much was that? I would have rather had cash. <laughs> Right, whatever that cake costs, I'd rather have cash. Right? And she, I was like, tell me the cost. She was like, no. I was like, tell me the cost. Well, we'll go ahead and put the money in my account. Yeah. Take that cake back. Yeah. And nobody even wanted the cake to look it's good to eat. All right? So when it starts talking about, so one thing we talk about with, with Will and Jada was uh, I was triggered the, the the Oscars night. I wasn't even watching. Mm -hmm. I mean, no right, disrespect. Yeah. I just don't watch stuff like that. Mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not watching, but my social media is blowing up. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm, I'm like, what happened? Right? And Mecca and I get to discussing what happened. I know it's your mama. You know, right. your mom, her mom watches. It's all the shows. She loves me. She's like Shade Room, right? Shade Room, right? right? So I was like, what happened, right? And so she told me. And 
and told me about the slap. And so I watched it live. And Mac and I had a good conversation about mm-hmm. it. And so talked about defending your wife's honor. Like mm-hmm. We started talking about accommodations in a marriage, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Dwayne, uh, Michelle, have y'all ever had a comment? Have y'all ever had a conversation about how to handle someone disrespecting mm-hmm. either your spouse or your family mm-hmm. and what roles y'all play as husband and wife? I can't say that we had a conversation about it. We've had situations where early on in our marriage, I mean, we, it just plays to who you are as a person. I think um, we've come across situations where I felt let's say disrespected and my wife and I are out dancing and Mm -hmm. I decide to relax and sit and sit down after dancing and she wants to dance and I'm like go dance and um a guy's approach her and what when I noticed it wasn't that I was bothered by a guy approaching her you know what guy wants a girl that no guy wants to talk to so guys come over and talk to her and I saw my wife mouth the words to my to this gentleman my I'm here with my husband and he's sitting over there Okay. Mm-hmm. So you did, you did well, Michelle. You did yeah, well. I'm here with my husband. He's sitting over there. So <laughs> then I see him take her hand, and after you know being told this and, and kiss it and trying to, <laughs> and so that disrespect, I was out of my seat like he, Will he put Smith. his lips on your wife's hand. He put his I just lips saw on out my the corner of, of my eye <laughs> Dwayne coming, and I'm like, oh and so <laughs> like Will, that um, that was very disrespectful as I took it, and I and I acted on it. At that time, but no, no, you can't, no, can't stop right there. What, what did you do? What did the you guy, do? The guy ran when once he saw Dwayne approach. Dwayne's a big guy. I, mean, I, I can say that. I'm secure my manhood. He's a big man. So it, it was it was simple. It never it didn't blow up into anything too big. But I, I also got mad at her because I felt you let this man do this to you. You can't. Yes, but as a, and that's a whole other conversation. But as a female in a when you're in a situation with another male like. Someone who's bigger than you. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to start fighting another man. But also, I was trying to show him, like, I have my wedding ring on. And mm-hmm. I did not know he was about to kiss my hand. I mm-hmm. thought he was going to look to see that I mm-hmm. had a wedding ring on. So, you know, at that point, it was too late because Dwayne was approaching and it was over. And I'm, I'm far removed from the club scene. So I know that there's a thing going out uh, where guys are a lot more aggressive mm-hmm. in the clubs. I've been hanging out with friends and brothers and I've seen you know, certain types of club where guys will, you know, literally hook a woman around, the, you know, the shoulder and pull her out to the mm-hmm. floor mm-hmm. and, you know, not be too polite in doing that. So I, I assume that that's what he was doing is, you know, it's, it felt weird. But this is in the early 2000s. Yeah, but Chef, did you like but- it, though? Keep it real. Did you like that? <laughs> Look at it. You see that? <laughs> did, you, did you like that? You like I mean, that? You, I don't know that I liked it. You want, I, I'm glad that it did not result in any actual confrontation. But I, I think there's a bit of you, there's a piece of you that likes that your man's going to defend your honor. And in a different scenario, because that was like, it's not like that's a regular occurrence. I can say that I definitely have in my professional life, as well as like friends and family had issues where I was hurt Mm -hmm. and it wasn't a matter of Dwayne defending my honor, but him being like my friends, you know, saying I got your back. Mm. I know that what, what do you need from me in this case for me to back you up to, you know, not make you feel like you're alone in this. And that to me is is certainly what I would expect and what I appreciate about about Dwayne. Like knowing I got somebody who has my back. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. I mean, that's the accommodation, learning learning how to do that, you know, to, to get your wife's back mm-hmm. in the way that she wants. What about you, Michelle? What about if a, a woman or, or even anyone, but just say a woman is being a little too chatty, kissing Dwayne's hand <laughs> <laughs> up in the club. <laughs> we've had any kind of scenario like that i think that um once once yeah, we, were, we were at a uh, friend invited us to something with it was he's a, a frat and i think they were oh uh, she didn't want to say because the woman probably no did, no it's no, not that did. i couldn't remember i didn't know where he was going 21 years is a long time so there's yes. a lot of stories so right. i'm like what had happened and wh- where was that but yeah so it was uh what is it called this it, it was an event. You well, could just say the, the ladies wear sundresses. Oh, okay. yeah. And, uh, so it was something like yeah. that we were yeah. invited to, and, mm-hmm. and somehow it's one of those times that you know we were in a, a spit, mm-hmm. a fight mm-hmm. about something. So I just walked. I went to go get something to something to eat or drink, 
just needed a minute to myself. And while I'm waiting in line, a woman in front of me started a conversation and we're talking. You look mad, bro. Well, we're talking, frankly, and then, you know, I, I spin around and boom, my wife is like, <laughs> right, like right up in there like, oh, what are we talking about up in here? <laughs> This is something I need. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, you know. But that's a different scenario because that's not me defending your honor. That's well, you, you know, you made it. You let it be known. You know, know that you're not let, by yourself. You're not here by myself. You see, for the net action, yeah. I can see that totally going down. What are we talking down. about? Right. What's the what conversation? Talking about? You know, and, and she, she, she listens in, and luckily, I haven't said anything or done anything wrong. Um, another instance was actually our first weekend for love. Hold on, I'll, did you like that? Did you like? I didn't. You didn't like it. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I, I want her to trust that I'm. I do the right thing. Okay. Okay. I didn't need to be checked. I felt like boom. You know, I'm in your face right now. <laughs> let you know. <laughs> or let her know. I was like, I can, you don't have to worry. You know, I, I'm. I'm not going to do anything. And so another time that it occurred, she wasn't around. But mm-hmm. I learned later that she was in the next room mm-hmm. and could hear a conversation that I was having at a bar while I was. Thought well, I guess I thought I was by myself, mm-hmm. and Which there was really there were two uh, women at the and bar never know who, right. who's <laughs> listening, and these women are talking, and they they carried on. I, I don't even remember the conversation, but you know, I didn't let it go too far. I just appreciate they gave me this compliment. Oh, you look so nice, and you look so good. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to go back to my room now. So I go back to my room, and then I find out later that she was just around the corner mm-hmm. having her makeup done and her everything that was done so you know never never worry about whether or not you're alone just be the same (laughs) (laughs) what what was uh what what was your take i mean what's 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 your wish for because we talked about it yeah we did what's your wish for how i would defend you if another man disrespected you oh so i i do want i do i do want for you to 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 protect me i want to feel protected I want you should be the one who checks him, not me. If it's mm-hmm. another guy, as my husband, you should check him. Define check. Yeah, um, stepping in between, letting him know, like this is my wife, mm-hmm. and you know, just tell him that you're not gonna allow for him to disrespect. Should me. I slap him? So I will say this: if I were, and I don't know what their relationship is, I don't know what the scenario that happened prior to before then, but if it was a situation where a guy was putting his hands on me or something, I would, yes, I would want you to knock him out. Okay. If that's what you felt called to do, but at the same time, I'm not trying to have my husband, <laughs> at the same time, I'm not trying to have my husband in jail and I do not um, promote violence at all. But what I'm saying is, is that I know you're from Decatur and there's a reason why I married you. I feel protected in this relationship, but I also know that you're very smart. So you're not going to ever put yourself in a situation that will take you away from our family. You, do you really believe that? I believe, I know that you're a little crazy. But <laughs> right, right, right. That's what I like. But when we're talking about the conversation <laughs> is that I'm, I'm with that accent, right? I'm like, oh, you give me permission? Be, oh my God. All right. I, I, you know, and so I probably, you know, I'm not saying it was right, but in the moment, uh, I felt like you publicly disrespected my wife. You get publicly disrespected. I'm not saying that's right. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that's what God said. He said, turn seven <laughs> times. I'm not there yet, right? I'm not there yet. That's the smart thing to do. But I told her, uh, one of the things that Mecca and I, you know, talked about was that I, I need you, if I'm about to do something crazy, to stop me. Mm-hmm. If you don't stop me, you're endorsing it because right. mm-hmm. you know me. I can right. be heated, mm-hmm. right? And so if if you if, if like when Jada looked at, if she looks at me, right. to me that's like go go act the fool, right? right? Go yeah. act the fool. And then afterwards, she's like, you didn't have to hit him that hard. It's like you. You gave me the okay, but I don't have degrees either. Okay. I'm in it. Or you're out. I, I'm yeah. calm, exactly. or unfortunately, I'm not. We talked about you being mm-hmm. more laid back. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't have that. Mm-hmm. And so, when when you're when you're married, the accommodations is like sometimes who who you are fits, and sometimes who you are doesn't fit your partner or where you are in life because it would have been a mistake mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. And, and it has cost will dearly mm-hmm. oh it's right. just another show that they pulled yeah i saw bright so, that was yeah. a great show yeah, that they, they yeah. just straight canceled um so when it, when it comes to just marriage you have to learn your partner on, on so many different levels and that's why it's important for you to attend a weekend for love, <laughs> all right? Because no, seriously, you have to know your couple. You have to know your 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 wife, your spouse, on so many different levels. Well, what's right? always surprising to me is that I've met so many couples over the years, especially the ones that I've seen that have struggled. 
where they never went to premarital counseling, right? So there's all these things that occur within the relationship, right? Maybe there's a family grandma that needs to move into the house. And the husband's like, I'm not trying to have grandma in the house, but grandma is very, the closest person to you. And so had that been a conversation in premarital counseling, which you have those real conversations, those real scenarios brought up, you would have addressed that before getting married to be on the same page. And even if you had premarital counseling, like being in this long term, there are going to be issues that continually come up. Oh, absolutely. It's like the seasons of marriage is more like a roller coaster. It's not Mm -hmm. a straight line. Mm -hmm. And so there's also a feeling of like, oh, well, we were doing great for 10 years, 15 years. Now that something pops up and you feel as though it means that you're not supposed to be together or that you can't be together. But it, I would definitely encourage people that it is a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And what I love about what we created a weekend for love is that we create an environment that no matter what season of life you're in, in your marriage, you have a place to come to connect with other couples that are going through it themselves, Mm -hmm. that you have resources to you know give you the right communication skills to light the fire if if you you know need more tips and techniques you know we really try to create something that there's something for everyone no matter where you are in your marriage but you know what I like more than than all of that and and those are all value adds for anyone that attends but it's also about the community piece because sometimes Mm -hmm. you can be married and and taking the kids to practice to soccer and volleyball and ballet and this and that and you're doing marriage right but you're but you're not doing the relationship right and so you get to be in a community with other couples that have the same lifestyle as you because there's some couples out there that don't have other married friends they just don't have them in whatever city that they're in so you get a chance to actually grow your marriage community with like-minded couples that are the same they get exactly where you are I remember our first retreat Um, there was an exercise and maybe Aldewan, you were leading it. And it was, the exercise was to look into your partner's eyes, Mm -hmm. like just look into your partner's eyes. And in that moment, I realized, I don't know the last time I looked into my husband's eyes because stopping and because of work and kids and like, just go, go, go. Yes. We're around each other. We sleep in the same bed, but just to stop the world and look into his eyes. And you know, it's, it's a weekend, but it's a weekend to pause everything else and just, you know, be present with each other mm-hmm. in your marriage. Yeah, for the record, that was another doctor, but that's okay. All right. That's, that's, that's you okay. were the only doctor. No, I'm, in our <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, I'm saying. We bring in multiple, uh, we bring in multiple experts to be able uh, to, to help your marriage. And so when we start talking about a weekend for love, it's, it's more than, than just a, a marriage retreat, it's about making sure that couples stay together. Because if we're talking about building our community, Mm -hmm. if you destroy the couple, you destroy the family. You destroy Mm -hmm. the family, you destroy the community. You destroy Mm -hmm. the community of families, you destroy the church, Mm -hmm. right? And so when we start keeping this based uh, with with God, we have to make sure that we are actively strengthening couples. I mean, you've heard us talk today about, and we could go on and on and on about the challenges, and so can you all, Mm -hmm. but it's all about making accommodations and asking your spouse, are they happy in multiple Mm -hmm. areas and moving and having relationship. We start talking about God, you know, you can go to church and not feel it because you don't have relationship. It doesn't matter if you've been a believer 40 years. So we have to make sure that you are in tune and, and understand, you know, um, the, the soul of your spouse. So we hope that you all have enjoyed watching uh, A Weekend for Love, and we outright want to invite you to meet us in person in Destin, Florida this year, September 30th, October 2nd, for the luxury marriage retreat, over-the-top, catered dates, uh, wedding reception, brunch, jazz, vow renewal, nightcap, you name it. And we have been able to create it. And God put us together as a couple to have our superpowers to be able to cater to you. So on on behalf of A Weekend for Love founders, I'm Aldwan. I thank you for allowing us to, to pour into your marriage. And I am Mecca. I look forward to seeing you all there. You can register at aweekendforlove.com. Looking forward to seeing you all. I'm Michelle. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, you can also um, do our social texts where you get some special um, advice and tips that encourage you along the way. And that number is 770-637-5710.
And I'm Dwayne, and again, we uh, we want to give thanks for everything that, you know, th we are able to do God's will. We pray to our Father that you will continue to watch over us and help us reach people that we can um, help grow their, their marriage and help them to stay together. Mm -hmm. All right, there it is. So a weekend for love. We'll see you all there. See you soon. See you soon. <laughs> That was a marriage blessing.